My name is Riti Kare. I am a clinical microbiologist at National Jewish Health. Um, I was also trained as a virologist, so medically relevant viruses are very near and dear to me. I think many people in this audience can probably relate, but a silver lining that I think has come out of this pandemic is that people are really starting to talk about viruses now, right? I mean, everyone knows that a virus is not the same thing as a bacterium. Everyone knows uh, what PCR is, right? Now a lot of our moms know what we do, right? So yeah, people are talking about viruses, and I think that the focus on this international um, monkeypox outbreak um, is a case in point. Now, monkeypox has a scary name. It's, there's some really scary pictures in the news, but I hope as we go through this, we're gonna find that it's not maybe as scary as it seems. Okay, so what is monkeypox? Monkeypox is an infection caused by monkeypox virus. Um, it's a cousin to variola virus, which is the pathogen that causes smallpox. Now, clinically, smallpox and monkeypox can look very similar, right? They can both cause fevers and chills, uh, headaches, muscle aches, fatigue. But there are a couple of really important differences to remember about smallpox and monkeypox. The biggest one is the difference in fatality rates, right? So smallpox has a fatality rate of up to 50%, whereas monkeypox comes nowhere close. Um, there are actually two strains of monkeypox. The one that's involved in the current outbreak is the West African strain, and that has a fatality rate of just up to about 1%. There is another strain, it's called the Congo Basin strain, and that does ha have um, a little bit higher of a fatality rate, up to 10%. Um, another difference between the two viruses is that monkeypox tends to demonstrate more lymphadenopathy than smallpox did. But one symptom that the two viruses do share, though, is that characteristic rash. So this rash appears like raised bumps over the skin. These bumps fill with fluid and pus over the course of four to five days and become pustules. These pustules are characteristically umbilicated, meaning they have a little divot in the center. Um, and then over the course of two to three weeks, these pustules will ulcerate, scab, and then fall off. Um, the lesions are actually the best way to test for the virus. You could collect um, lesion fluid or the tissue with a swab or directly into viral transport media. Um, whole blood doesn't work as well. Um, and then um, that uh, sample can be tested by PCR. There are some labs in the U.S. that can do um, this PCR. It's a general orthopox virus assay. Um, and if that is positive, it can be sent to the CDC for further confirmatory testing. Okay, another feature of these pox virus pustules is that they all tend to occur in the same stage. So they'll all generally appear together, they'll umbilicate, ulcerate, and then fall off together. Um, and that can be useful when you're trying to differentiate between different viruses. Um, for example, chicken pox, which is caused by varicella zoster virus, can happen at all different stages. So some new ones and some that are already ulcerating. Um, actually, a lot of viruses can cause rashes, right? So a way to um, differentiate them is to also look at their distribution or their pattern um, over the body. Um, monkeypox and smallpox tend to occur more centrifugally. That means they, uh, the lesions tend to occur mostly on the extremities and face, so sometimes even on the palms and soles, which is kind of an odd place. Uh, the pox lesions can then spread all over the body. Chickenpox, on the other hand, can be kind of the opposite. It has more of a centripetal distribution where most of the lesions tend to occur on the trunk and face and fewer on the extremities. Um, measles and rubella have kind of a pour down distribution where a lot of the lesions happen on the face and then decrease the further down you go. Now another really big difference between monkeypox and smallpox is how they are acquired. Monkeypox can be acquired from other humans, but they are generally um, acquired from animals. Uh, we know that it can affect monkeys, that's how it got its name. Um, it can also infect rodents and other small animals. And this animal reservoir is really significant because it makes the virus really difficult to eradicate. That's different from smallpox, which can infect only one host, humans. 
And with all these global public health efforts to vaccinate and reduce person-to-person -person transmission, we were able to eradicate smallpox. And actually, um, poliovirus is another really good example of that. Um, poliovirus only infects humans. And we have been globally trying to eradicate that for several decades now. And it's kind of exciting, as of 2019, two out of the three wild polioviruses that ha have now been declared eradicated from the world. There is still one wild poliovirus remaining in some pockets of the world. Um, Afghanistan, pa uh, Pakistan, and um, two new cases appeared um, in Africa actually this year. So still, virus eradication is difficult. Okay, so back to monkeypox. Until recently, monkeypox was primarily limited to some West African and Central African countries. Um, that doesn't mean it wasn't seen anywhere else. In fact, in 2003, there was actually a pretty large outbreak here in the US, primarily in the upper Midwestern states. Um, some animals had been brought in from Africa uh, for sale as exotic pets, and monkeypox hitched a ride. Um, it was transmitted from those animals to prairie dogs that were housed in the same facility. And then when those um, prairie dogs were sold as pets, it was transmitted to humans through bites or handling or even just cleaning um, the bedding and cages of the animals. Um, now in the 2003 outbreak, none of the cases had been attributed to human-to-human -to -human transmission. But then on May 7th of this year, so just about a month ago, um, the WHO started reporting the spread of monkeypox in non-endemic countries. Um, to date, there have been more than 1,000 cases in almost um, 30 countries. Um, now, a lot of the individuals in this outbreak haven't had that travel exposure, and so there really is this human-to-human -human transmission element. Um, and so how does this happen? How does it transmit from person to person? Um, primarily, it's through direct contact with those monkeypox pustules. Um, but the virus can also be transmitted through other body fluids, for example, respiratory droplets and other aerosols, um, as well as fomites that have been contaminated with the, uh, that infective um, uh, lesion fluid or body fluid. Uh, one other thing to think about um, this outbreak is that it has appeared slightly differently. Um, there have been more anogenital and oral lesions being reported, and the lesions tend to occur a little less classically. So instead of them all occurring at the same stage, like I just told you, instead these tend to show up at slightly all um, different types of lesions at the same stage. Um, another thing that we've seen is that this outbreak has a higher frequency of men who have sex with men. Now, I just want to stress here that despite the very sensational news headlines that this virus is transmitted through sex, we don't actually know yet if um, the virus is just being transmitted through close, intimate contact or if it really is being transmitted through sexual body fluids. And that matters, right? As we found out in the Zika virus outbreak that happened just a couple of years ago in 2015, um, that was an arbovirus that's transmitted through the bite of a mosquito, um, but it actually could be transmitted through semen, and that's important because it meant it could be transmitted in utero to the fetus and call, cause congenital Zika virus syndrome. Okay, so what can be done about monkeypox? Is this going to be the next pandemic? Um, and the answer is, um, hopefully not. Um, for one, it's a, it's a DNA virus, meaning that it replicates a lot slower than our RNA viruses, like the flu or SARS-CoV-2. Um, another is that we already have a vaccine. Um, of course, the, the story is legend, right? We, we know of the story of Edward Jenner, who apparently um, noticed that dairy maids who had been exposed to cowpox tended not to get um, the more deadly smallpox, and that led to the first vaccine. Um, the good news is that vaccine is also cross-protective against monkeypox, about a rate of 85%. So that is definitely another reason um, that we are hoping it's not going to spread. Another uh, potential reason is that we have 
antivirals. There's a couple that have been tested. Sidofovir has been tested in animals and has shown to have an effect. And there's Tecoviramat, which is a pox virus specific antiviral that prevents the pox viruses from exiting the cell. So having all of these things in place before an outbreak starts to get crazy definitely puts us in a better position than we were with COVID. If you guys are interested in learning more about monkeypox or other viruses, actually, please take a look at my book. It's on sale in the ASM bookstore or on Amazon. Thank you.